I am the self-proclaimed champion of breakfast. No one actually crowned me that championship title. I kind of just gave it to myself because I love breakfast and I love creating new recipes that will celebrate breakfast like this one right here. We got two types of breakfast Pop-Tarts, a bacon, sausage, egg, and cheese, and a ham, egg, and cheese with a little bit of hollandaise sauce, AKA an Eggs Benedict Pop-Tart. I'm partial to cooking my bacon in the oven and if you've never done that, here's the recipe. Line a baking tray with some aluminum foil, throw down some strips, cook it at 375 for 10 minutes, take it out, flip the strips, drain the grease, put it back in for 5 to 10 depending how you like your bacon. Now onto the sausage patty. I want to be kind of precise here so I'm equally measuring these sausage patties. And the key to these patties is kind of flattening them out. I'm adding a lot of ingredients into each one of these pop tarts and if it's too thick it's going to be too big, it's not going to close, it's not going to cook properly. You're probably thinking to yourself, I'm cooking the meat, then I'm putting it inside of a puff pastry pocket and I'm cooking it again. When you put it in the pocket and you cook the puff pastry, it's not like I'm fully cooking the interior. That's why we're gonna cook all the ingredients and then add it into the puff pastry. Here's a really delicious way to eat eggs. And before you tell me that a famous chef told you never to do this before, then what did you do before you heard that guy say that? You probably listened to somebody else. So maybe, just maybe, you're considering listening to me. Add some shredded cheese to a bowl of scrambled eggs and cook it on low heat. The cheese will retain the moisture in the eggs. It'll also add a little bit of flavor and creaminess. I'm also lightly turning over an egg and cooking it a little bit on both sides which is going to be the egg factor inside the eggs benedict pop tart the trick for this is to just cook it enough that there's no yolk showing because we're adding it into the puff pastry this will overcook if you cook it too much i'm still trying to obtain some sort of runny yolkness which will really lend itself well to the concept of Eggs Benedict. And in terms of layering, I added some cheese down first, which will help protect any grease that comes off the sausage patty. Added the sausage patty on top, followed by the eggs, some bacon, and some more cheese. For the Eggs Benedict version, we're gonna add some more cheese and a few slices of smoked ham. On top of the smoked ham, I'm gonna add our kind of cooked turned over egg. And then super carefully place another sheet of puff pastry on top, making sure that the egg yolk does not burst. To achieve some sort of a shininess and golden brown texture on top, but also to make sure that the puff pastry sheets stick together, I'm going to lightly coat each one of these in a beaten egg wash. And just for some added breakfast flavor and texture, on the bacon, egg, sausage, and cheese, I'm gonna add some everything bagel seasoning, and on the eggs benedict, shave a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Now onto the hollandaise sauce, which I don't understand why, but a lot of people are scared to make. In the past, I've made hollandaise sauce in the microwave, and that's a very easy way, but this is the more traditional way, and I'm using a double boiler, which is a small amount of water at the bottom of a pot, which will create steam, and then adding a bowl on top of that with the eggs and lemon juice inside, which will help slowly cook it. Once these bake for roughly 20 minutes, there's only a few more things to do before we can indulge and eat this breakfast and of course never skip egg day. To the top of the bacon, sausage, egg, and cheese ones, I'm gonna add another slice of cheese and put it back in the oven until the cheese melts. I'm also gonna chop up some chives, which will ultimately be the garnish for the eggs benedict version. And for the top of the eggs benedict, you could spoon over some of this hollandaise sauce or you can transfer to a squeeze bottle and make a nice little pattern like it's a toaster strudel. Whatever you do, garnish it with some of these chopped chives. Now, obviously, this is not really a Pop-Tart, but it looks like a Pop-Tart, and I can guarantee you that all the ingredients involved are delicious. So maybe you want to leave a comment down below. Let me know what other quote unquote pop tarts you want to see me make. I've made a lot already, all of which are published at my website, recipechampions.com. I got cheeseburger pop tarts, chicken parm pop tarts, and maybe by the time you see this video, I'll have cheesesteak pop tarts. Hope you guys like this video. Bye.